What up, peeps? It's your girl, Dosh. Come back to you for real takes. Well, I'm coming to you guys. This has to do with um, what I would normally consider a reaction video for uh, the series, The Nevers. Um, just kind of give me a little heads up on this particular video. It would not be a reaction where I'll actually get to show the show. Uh, I did this one a couple weeks ago, and when I tried to put it up, multiple times, more than three times, um, got blocked. And of course, copyright through HBO. So that kind of let me know as much tweaking and editing I could possibly do. It's not seeming to fair. Um, probably some people are starting to do a couple of them. So they kind of, you know, more still checking it, flagging it, whatever you want to call it. So I said, let me just play it safe. <laughs> Sorry. And just do a review discussion. So on this one, you will see me and definitely in a different uh, attire to know that this was, of course, previously taped. So I definitely wanted to break it down, at least showcase that part because I just actually watched it and I really wanted to get my thoughts out. So with that said, this is for um, episode five titled Hanged. And I hope you guys enjoy. All right, you guys, this episode was so good. I just have... I had to write some notes on this one because I didn't want to just mix up everything um, in regards to this. And we have one more episode left. I can only imagine what the last one will be. But there was a lot going on. I'm just going to stick to the key things I truly took from this particular episode. First off, if you saw the beginning of the episode, <laughs> I mean, I already said I wanted to know a little bit more of understanding um, what's happening with Amalia and Dr. Cousins. Definitely the attraction is there. I really was hoping down the road we might see backstory just to kind of see how it came to be like this. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think I said in a previous couple of the episodes that um he has a wife and child. So I know he goes there. We've not seen it where they're, you know, no longer here. I thought they were from after the first episode because we just didn't see him anymore. But hence he doesn't really talk about him. I think that they are probably still alive. And he lives not in the orphanage, so he comes and visits if anyone needs, you know, of assistance. But definitely hot and heavy. Of course, you know, him coming, her, you know, feeling the need for, you know, putting herself in situations like, you know, she's trying to get proposed, like that little comedy made. And you could just see they just really like, they really, the just the chemistry is like off the charts. So... I want to see how this progresses with them. Definitely hot and steamy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So besides that, let me just kind of move on. Um, I will say that Lord Messon definitely, he definitely has an agenda. You see him with um, what looks like some sort of counsel. I want to just call him that. And some of them are in agreement that this, you know, basically this hanging execution with malady needs to happen. And uh, one of them, he kind of feels a certain way, like, what is this saying? Whatever. And he's like, oh, some of them start to feel like, okay, are you feeling sorry for the touch? But it's just like, okay. And I said it myself, I'm like, these people, these individuals, some, mostly female, but there are some men scattered who have abilities, did not ask for this, whichever, but they must feel like some of them, if they do have it, will probably use it in a certain manner or whichever. Hence, of course, you know, a little bit like Melody and, you know, Bonfire Annie. So I can see that potential, but to assume every last one and for them to feel the need. Because, of course, as Lord says, he wants them to have a certain order of how things are being done. And, of course, them being at the helm of this order so they can keep things a certain way. And, of course, a way that's pleasing to them. Um I'm really interested a little bit more in his story. And I hope when we, if and I really pray we do get a season two. I need more on him. I don't think we're going to see enough. I don't think we're going to see what's in that basement before the finale. I could be wrong, but I just really need to know more. The fact that um, Massa feels this way and then decides to go see uh, the Beggar King and ask him for a little bit of assistance to, once this happens with the execution, to kind of rev it up a little bit enough to get them scared. So if some of them decide to lash out and use their abilities against the people in London, this, whatever him and the king decide on, you know, will scare some of them where they won't use their actual abilities. Also, them trying to register them. You see Nick at the... um you know, police department, whatever, talking to the actual, the, the woman reporter, whatever. And then, you know, you see the other people coming in and trying to register whatever, because 
if they're not registered and they have to wear like a thick little ribbon or whatever. If not, they get caught out, whatever. I think they get, you know, locked up or fined or whatever. So um, that's really interesting. So that's the new thing. That's their way of kind of regulating them. And then, of course, Nick, you know, having to explain this to Hugo, who's trying to do his best to do all about his business, you know, with his little, I'm going to be honest, like some sort of little fantasy brothel type of thing with his, you know, touch. But it's just like he's he wants him. If you want these people to work, whatever, you need to make sure you're able to protect them. I feel like Hugo. Hugo is pretty much, he doesn't really care about the touch. He cares about what the touch can do for him and the amount of money he can make from all the people who want to come. Some people are very much infatuated with the touch, whatever, and all that, and that that need or whatever, you know, so I'm not surprised about that. But in the end, this is business to him. So when Nick says that, we'll see how it actually turns out with that. I'm actually curious to see how further it's going. And also being that we know that Augustus is involved with him, with that paperwork, I'm assuming it probably went through now, so we'll have to see how that pans. Speaking of Augie, him and his sister look like they're having maybe a lunch or whatever, and you can tell that she is feeling a certain way, hence her previous visit with the doctor, uh, Dr. Hag, you know, played by Dennis O'Hare. I think the doctor likes her. She, I don't know if she's getting it by whatever, a little bit of the touch what, of him touching her, so to speak. Um, that was a little interesting. I think, you know, she feels a certain way because she wants this, whatever that I want to call it. And I think I wrote it down, the Galathia, whatever they're trying to locate because Lucy was told or found out whatever she needed. And also Desiree found out some information with one of the men. That's why they know the floor plans of where the stuff's at, whatever to get to. So that was really interesting when um, she was just, you know, talking to him about trying to find some sort of cure and trying to see what they could do. She's like, I don't want anything to be wrong with some sort of crack. Well, it should be a crack. That means that the crack is going to break and her becoming very probably flustered, whichever. But in the end, um, I don't really feel for her because when she was with Augie, you know, you hear some people talking about the execution. Oh, maybe I should have a gun to shoot or maybe, you know, you should just get a gun and shoot yourself or whatever and all that, whichever, you know, and just having these little moments of tantrum or rant she was having and talking about, you know, some of these people, these horrible people, you know, they're dressed up like this and it is. And I'm thinking to myself, and I said it. I said, are you talking about yourself? Because you're no better than that man behind you with his wife talking about what they would, would love to do to Melody. Honey, you have people in that place who have been ripped up. They're touched, you know, with some saw or whatever through their brain or their skull. And you are knowing they're being used as little pawns, like little zombies helping to whatever, navigate that thing, to get it to work, whatever. And you're sitting here, you know, trying to be, she's a straight hypocrite. I'm not here for her. I'm just not. And if I'm not mistaken, I missed a little part with Lord Bassett when they were talking with the guys. He has something to do with Mary being killed. I think I just missed that part. Let me correct myself. Yes. So it really wasn't Lavinia. It was actually him. And not to say Lavinia isn't doing her dirty work because you can clearly see uh, what she's happening inside there with the doctor. So yeah, I'm not here for her either. She's still, still a terrible person. I wish her brother knew, but she's too busy belittling him at times or whatever. And you can clearly see a scene where it showed her with him having his drawings of birds. But in between that, you see a picture of what looked like to be Penis. And I think she got a glimpse of that. So she knows he still likes her, <laughs> doesn't realize that she wants he wants to be her friend still. And I'm hoping he stands up to her. I'm like, please do. If it's not this season, hopefully it's the next season, whatever. I'm sick of her talking down to him, whatever. Like, stand up for yourself, whatever. I, I'm not used to seeing where they always have the men acting like they can't speak up for themselves, and especially, nah, not having it. So hopefully, it, oh, as time goes on, he will. But needless to say, um, just, yeah, Lavinia, she's just, oh, she's some garbage. I don't care for Lord Massena. He's some crap, too. And just to know that he did a part in that. Oh, I will say also the crossroads between Penis and Amalia of what need to be done. It was unfortunate that they had a little bit of a little bit of a disagreement because Penis is just like as much as I, she truly doesn't care for Malady. She doesn't feel like she should be used as, you know, a little bit of a fodder or use as, you know, what's the word I want to use? Um, Kind of like like a slaughter for show. I wrote it down because I was like, let me just say the words. That's what she said during the thing. And it was really interesting. Amalia's like, I'm trying to find the Galanthia, whatever. We're trying to do this, whatever. And now you want to, in the midst of the actual plan, do this. So you see them go out to the middle of the orphanage and ask to see, you know, about the plan, whatever. What do y'all want to do? And needless to say, some of them take sides. You see with Amalia, cousins, <laughs> we saw, um, who was it? Um, Bonfire Annie. Um, one of the other touched um, in the in the actual you know show, and then you see Augie goes over there instead of with penis. I thought that was like awkward. With penis, she has nibble. 
She had Harriet. Um, I think Myrtle wants to go, but I think she she was not asked to go. And um, there was a couple, I think Desiree. So some of them truly, you know, believe the convictions. And I'm thinking, and, and Amalia does see what she's trying to do. And she sees the bigger, but she knows what Melody has done. So it's like, she's kind of hard for her to really feel like, why are you going to help this woman? She's like, you know, I'm going to help her. I didn't say, you know, I have a full plan or whatever during execution to come there, have it all planned out with a couple of other attached to whatever. And let's just say when the, the day comes, you know, of course they're there, you know, Desiree, you know, Harriet and Penis are going in there and they got the thing set up nibbles on the top of the thing. So they could shoot down. I'm assuming what would have been the, the, um, actual, what is it? Um, I'm gonna, oh gosh, a little thing for the neck, which I can't remember the name of it, but needless to say, um, they were just, everybody was set up and coordinated, but it looks like things did not go as planned because her main guy who, if he's in the room with you, he can make you think whatever he says, um, big guy with the hat and he has it where he has them digging, whatever. And come to find out the way it's set up, it shows him actually, setting up where you see the bars around the have they have the setup with the whole people sitting there watching so they can watch her be killed and they decide to electrocute, electrocute the people and i'm just like god damn i'm like wow she wanted to go out to do this and penis tries to show up and he was like you know that's they deserve a little bit more so she tries to stop it penis kind of gets a little hurt from the shock whichever nick's trying to stop it hugo gets kind of hurt in the midst of it but mass and lord mass helps him you know out of it but he doesn't want to help anybody else and of course the beggar king has used some of his men outside of some of the perimeter to set up like a little fires here with and all that and cause some more extra ruckus or whatever to get the people kind of a little bit nervous and scared and he's not being all people who are anybody who's touched just some regular folk. Now, in the midst of this, you see where Harriet kind of gets, you know, kind of locked in the room and Desiree was able to get out and she sets it up where she, you know, makes the glass turn from the, the what is it, like the door and she kind of gets trampled on. The um, actual reporter decides to come and help and she helps her up, whichever and all that. Desiree grabs her. But um, what's interesting is after all this, the, some of the people who did get electrocuted, whichever, and they're being close, whichever, Nick goes over here and I just got to go here. Let me just tell you guys, um, <laughs> I'm going to give some straight up shout out to Amy Masson, um, playing Melody, not just playing Melody either. She was playing another character. Um, the Melody that we think that was hanging is not really Melody. Come to find out a particular character from episode two that wanted to kind of taunt um, Mary, her name was Clara. And if you see the shoe fall, you notice that some toes are missing. And I just kind of yell out, um, that is not Melody. That is the girl. And I said, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So of course we have to kind of retrain ourselves back. Nick eventually shows back up to uh, the precinct, starts putting two and two together. If y'all remember the one of the the first episode where it shows this body that was down the ground, wherever the guy showed up and came and told Nick, and it had the writing on the wall. If you see in the beginning of this episode, you see what looks like to be the reporter kind of giving a little breakdown. Oh, look at that writing. Oh, that's I have a jacket. Just kind of talking about this person could be a, a regular little you know, class worker, you know, working woman, whatever, this could, this is this, try to put all this stuff in the next mind about a possibility of who this could possibly be. So you can try to, I'm assuming, um, understand the case. Uh, come to find out all this time, that was Malady. I should have caught it because of the voice, but it wasn't registering at the time because the voice is so similar to her. And of course, Malady with the reporter, but needless to say, when he looks at the foot, he notices that and whatever. And he writes the name down, Effie Boy, because that's what the real woman's name was, who was down and who looked like she was burned up, whatever, and all of that. So she used her identity to come in there and just act like she was just a regular reporter just doing her dang on thing. I'm going to tell you like this. When they showed the decoy of how it happened when Nick was trying to chase her and she went around a corner and they switched places, I was just like, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. <laughs> Well done. Well done. She was out. So those other instances where she's coming into town, walking around, keeping in a muck, just blending in because throughout this whole season, they kept show, we kept seeing Melody be showcased as being, you know, crazy, doesn't understand this, whatever and all that. When you see her walking in as that little reporter wanting a story, you would never think anything of it. I was literally perplexed, which is another character, you know, who is this person, you know, they're from, you know, another, you know, 
I'm assuming newspaper or office, or whatever, and all that coming here, wanting the story, whatever, and all that unbeknownst to me. And I look forward to watching other people's reactions because I'm really dying to see what they think. I am literally for guests. And then watching all the rhetoric happening on the main rows, whatever, and her walking, taking off a little bit of chin, the nose, the wig, and it's malady. I mean, yeah, you want to think she's dumb. She's not dumb at all. She's playing the game and plays it quite well. Because I kept thinking in the last episode, I said somebody might try to, you know, bust her out. And I think it would be pissed. Maybe one of her you know, people. Oh, no. She never <laughs> went in there to begin with. Clara wanted to feel so, she wanted to feel needed. And she wanted to prove herself. If you saw in episode two. This is what she had to do it. You see how they were going to try to save her, but in the end, they think Malady wanted to die. She wanted to show them this is what would happen. Um, but no, Clara wanted to fulfill her duty and honor what Malady wanted, and she did. And you see what happened. I mean, yeah, yeah, this was a great episode. I did not see that coming, and that totally caught me off guard. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the season finale. I want to see what's going to happen with Malia, and I'm thinking Nick, and of course, clearly knows it's not. <laughs> that's not her. That's not Malia. And if you didn't look at her face to really check, he has, he's going to be searching for her. So it's going to be wondering where she's going to go. She took off her wig, whatever, and all. she's walking around some other people, but now it's like, She's out there. So unless she goes, he goes to see Amalia and Penis to kind of give him a heads up that was not, you know, her. And he probably will. We'll see what happens in the last episode of the season because I really want to see how this all turns out. Because, yeah, this was a nice one. So I really feel like they're going to end it with, you know, probably some sort of bang with that. So that would be really interesting. But yes, I hated to ramble on, but it had to be said. I really just wanted to get off my chest because this really was a good episode. So with that said, you guys, comment below. I would love to know what you all think. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next reaction. You guys take care.